Chapman to have you here and to be able to discuss a wide range of issues, local, national, international. So uh, thanks for taking time Thank out you. from what I know is a Thank real busy course. schedule to be with us here at the table today. Let's talk first about what is topic A right now. And it was interesting, uh, News Channel 8 carried it earlier today, the uh, press event, the rally style event that Speaker Pelosi, Leader Hoyer, and so many other top Democrats in the House had as they unveiled the health reform plan that there were clearly, and I don't think this was spin or fakery, I think this was genuine enthusiasm regarding a piece of legislation about which there are high expectations and there, a lot of work has gone into it. Not to say you're, you're, you're home free, but that was the vibe I got. How does it uh, feel, give us your thoughts on this legislation. Is it, is, it, is it the combining of the three bills that have been in the House? I mean, is that kind of what happened today, the unveiling of a, of a combining of three pieces? It is that, that, Bruce, and a lot more. See this? That's the sign for victory, because that is what's going to happen on the House floor. I see 218, perhaps more, votes. We didn't get there the easy way. We got there meeting about three times a week as a caucus, hearing all kinds of people had regional concerns, some people had fiscal concerns, uh, some people had public option concerns. The speaker sat there and listened uh, and said, wait a minute, let's see if we can fix that. Now I'm telling you, she, she deserves a lot of credit because you're dealing with 218, all of us. I had my own health care plan. I knew can you take care of me in this bill without cascading the whole thing? Look what we've done. We're going to serve the tax, save the taxpayers $30 billion over the next 10 years, coming in below the president's mark. You're going to never again be turned down because of pre-existing conditions. You're going to put uh, 36 million more people who have no health insurance on health insurance. They say, You're going to cover they say 96% of Americans could be covered if this goes through. Thank you for that figure. Uh, unlike uh, some other bills that were before us, this covers virtually everybody. And let me emphasize, Bruce, that if everybody isn't covered, you and I pay $2,000 per year to cover the uncovered. So nobody has a right to be outside of this uh, umbrella. Uh, we, I don't think that putting together bills is making sausage. In this case, it was playing chess. And all, it, 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 all the pieces are in place. I can't tell you that after it gets to the Senate, they won't mess over our chessboard. I can tell you that this is the bill that should pass the Congress, not just the House. I get the feeling from the outside, and I'm curious to get your take on how it played out within, that public option, which, you know, is so fascinating to me because the president sold the public option well. He said, you know, if you, you know, people criticize the federal government for everything. They say we can't do anything well. So if that's your view, then how can you fear a, uh, a new sort of uh, um, federal presence in the healthcare uh, world? to provide a competition for and an incentive for the for-profit companies to get their administrative expenses down. So he goes out, makes the case for a public option, but then says, it's not a must-have, it's a I would like. So it goes from, you know, sort of being out there, but sort of like not the, the a, a likely scenario to be in any kind of a final bill, to suddenly having quite a bit of momentum, possibly in both chambers. In both chambers, it now has came roaring back. How did this happen? Well, a number of things happened. Uh, there was a lot of noise uh, during the summer, which kept people from seeing anything but people jumping up and saying, don't do public option, forcing us to spend disproportionate time on what is not really the most important thing in the bill, albeit very important. Why is it important? Because if we have a public option, uh, not only does it drive down uh, costs, um, it creates competition with the people who've been driving uh, up, up costs. Um, something else um, uh, happened. People figured out, I think maybe too much, that there was an analogy to Medicare. And guess what? They really do love Medicare. Uh, I have. I've expressed it in the caucus. And people said, hmm, uh, I have a feeling that it may have come roaring back 
with more of a brawl than we wanted because to tell you the truth, Bruce, only about 12 million people are going to qualify for it. I think there are a lot of people who like mm -hmm. what they're hearing about mm -hmm. the public plan, and when mm -hmm. they find out they're not in it, they're going to say, hey, wait a minute, what happened here? I don't like my employer-based plan. Sorry, you're not in it. So what would keep people out? Would it be, like, if, if I'm Joe, if, if, if I uh, have... Uh, if my employer offers me health coverage and maybe I have to pay something into it or I don't like the company they have it with, if I were to sort of voluntarily say, well, I'm not taking my company's plan, I want this other thing, would I be denied? You cannot come out of your employer-based plan for a good reason. Mm -hmm. Then you leave in sure. too narrow a, a pool in that plan. If the employer is is giving you right. health insurance, albeit with some contribution from you, sure. you'd have contribution in the so-called exchange too. Uh, and if you cannot afford the employer's health-based plan, hey, we will subsidize you up to, what is it, 150% of poverty, just like we will be subsidizing people elsewhere, including in the public plan. So we've got a level playing field. That's what some of the public was concerned about. Let me see how you like these apples, because I don't see that we've done anything but take into account all the complaints, and we had a reason to do so. Ours is a very broad caucus. We could not get 218 votes like the Republicans can with, with what, they, what they are just say no vote. Uh, they have a very narrow party. So we, had to, we had to go to Republican-leaning uh, districts and liberal districts like my own and come up with a plan that could get 218 votes. So you're, you, you do seem to think that, uh, and, and there's been, you know, you had the speaker on the one side and a lot of the people in the press on the other saying, we don't think she can do it. We think she's overly optimistic or whatever, whatever. You seem to think that a majority could vote for the bill. And are some that are being counted among the 218-plus from more moderate Republican districts? Absolutely. The reason that they've had such sway, uh, for example, you probably will not see as robust a public option as we desire. This kills many of us because the more robust, the more the costs are driven down. But we've had to give up a lot in order to bring them in, and that's the price of having a diverse call, because that's why the Republicans don't have to worry. When you only represent Southern districts and very Republican districts, you can just say no and see if you can get away with <laughs> get away with it. May I say, Bruce, there is dissatisfaction with Congress, but the greatest satisfaction is with Republicans who can now claim 20 percent of the American electorate. So let's see what saying no gets you. Phone lines open as we talk with D.C. Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. If you have a question or comment for her, afternoon viewers, join us by calling 703-387-1020. As always, that's our number. As always, we look forward to your questions and comments. Join us if you have a quick uh, something to offer. The, again, the number here, 703-387-1020. We'll go to the phones as your questions and comments come in. In. I wasn't able to catch all of it, but the part of it I saw, clearly the uh, award uh, ceremony for a man I know that you know and admire well, former Massachusetts Senator and D.C. native Ed Brooke, that was a real moment. Ooh, presidential moment. Uh, the president, third senator, they had to shake the hand of the first senator who paved the way, and <laughs> the senator speaking without a note, pu putting all of us to shame, uh, with the eloquence of a man still speaking on the Senate floor, uh, and the line that <laughs> district residents would have loved. Believe me, the man had no notes. It came out of him. After being very humble and thanking all who had gathered there, especially the leadership for this award, he said in so many words, and I would trade it for votes for the vote for D.C. residents. <laughs> no notes. It just came out of his mind. This and was not something Norton slipped him ahead Norton of time. Didn't say. He was like, no, don't forget this. But you'll recall that Ted Kennedy and we both expressed our, our great sadness that he wasn't here to be on the stage, and I introduced this as part of the campaign for D.C. voting rights. So here we were under the rotunda with the entire leadership Assembled the Republicans and, Le and the Democrats all loving him. Republicans seeing one of their own because he was a Republican elected in a humongously Democratic state with 2% blacks, hearing him say, pass D.C. voting rights, hearing our leadership in whose hands it lies saying, pass it. The, p the crowd just rose to their feet, and not all of those were D.C. residents. All right, so at the risk of throwing some cold water on this, talk about what we discussed yesterday, the report in Politico, that uh, powerful 
Committee Chairman Daniel Inouye of Hawaii, one of those, I'll say, crusty old bulls, and you can <laughs> leap to his defense, but that's, you know, the sense I get, right, for what a tiny bit it's worth. So he says, forget about attaching this to the supposedly must-have, can't-fail DOD appropriations measure, which has traditionally been a great place to attach a bill that you want to get through if you're lucky enough to be able to have the stars <laughs> aligned where you can do it. Do you, and I'm told the lines are full, so everyone on, the, on hold, stay there. We're going to extend our time with Congresswoman Norton to get to, to your calls. Is this a, 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 a sense of, gosh darn it, it looked like a great idea, and now it feels like it's slipping away? <laughs> oh, no. We got a menu of ideas before the leadership. I don't blame Mr. Inouye. They're putting on his bill the hardest thing of all, a debt reduction. This, we don't want to take a separate vote on that. So they're putting it on defense. At the time we proposed defense and a whole menu of other approaches, that wasn't even being thought about. So now he thinks, oh, my God, they're putting everything on my bill just because they think it's a good must-pass bill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Besides, it really isn't with any particular chairman. Once you get to where we are, it is with the leaders of the House and Senate across the board, and there are a number of leaders all helping us. They sincerely want, want this. Uh, I, yesterday at the wonderful ceremony for uh, Senator Brooke, I had very good discussions with leaders, several of them who were there from the House and Senate side. They are trying. They can succeed. Uh, there was an uh, interesting editorial. In, in, in the post this morning, mm -hmm. turning to where the bill is. And the reason the bill is there is because we have got more than 60, we got 63 people who want to vote for it without guns. We've got the overwhelming vote in the Senate. So it's not the members, it's trying to figure it out. We didn't say to leadership, go figure it out. We spent three months doing a lot of, of work on our own with only the CRS to advise us. And we didn't, because we know with the district saying, here it is, knowing that if you shoot down that, we're out of luck. We said, here are a whole set of mm -hmm. ways to do it. And then we found a number of precedents, even this year, that use some of those approaches to get other things done. So we think we are, in terms of whether it can technically be done, there's no question that it can be done, and I believe it will be done this year. Talking with D Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, we'll take a break and we'll come back with much more news talk right after this. Kyle Osborne Weather on News Channel 8. More local, more often. For nearly 50 years, Empire has built a proud reputation for customer service. One room at a time, with every floor we lay and every space we carpet. While other companies talk about their service, how can you be sure? At Empire, we treat you to a level of service that rates an A from the Better Business Bureau. For quality and convenience, professional installation, and will beat any competitive offer guaranteed. Call today. 800-588-2300. Empire. Today. I'm Bob McDonald, candidate for governor, and I sponsored this ad. Cree Deed's attacks on Bob McDonald are false. Dishonest. Are dishonest. Half the deputy attorneys general Bob McDonald appointed are women. Putting women in positions of authority. Trusting women like me. Professional women and working mothers. Women Bob McDonald trusts to protect Virginia. Prosecuting sexual predators with laws passed by Bob McDonald. I've seen Bob McDonald stand up to protect women and children. That's what Bob McDonald will do as governor. And that's how Verizon Fios works. Any questions? So will the TV in my house look that amazing? Yep. Fios has 100% fiber optics straight to your home. And I get $150 back when I switch to Fios. That's correct. I, I got a question. I got a question. Is anybody here buying this? Read and weep, pal. Switch to Fios now and get $150 back, plus a free multi-room DVR for three months. Record shows in one room, watch them in up to six other rooms. Unlike cable, Fios delivers 100% fiber optics straight to your home for HD picture quality that beats cable and customer satisfaction. America's top-rated internet and phone, all for just $99.99 a month with a one-year agreement. Call 1-877-4-FIOS-TV and get $150 back, plus a free DVR for three months. Don't wait. Get all three amazing services for just $99.99 a month. Hurry. Call 1-877-4-FIOS-TV before November 7th. This is Fios. This is big. 
much more of our conversation with Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton straight ahead. Your phone calls for her as well. And then later in this very busy hour, we're going to spotlight the most contested, the most closely uh, focused upon races in the Virginia House of Delegates this year. All 100 seats up for grabs. We're going to spotlight the most interesting races across Northern Virginia. We've got two very interesting guests stand by to talk about that. Right now, though, we pause to get you caught up on the latest news, weather, and traffic. Eric Foster starts us off with a first look at the ride home. Hello, Eric. Hey there, Bruce. Thank you. Some significant beltway delays out there early on this afternoon in a loop here, bumper to bumper at Connecticut Avenue. Delays essentially out of Tyson's Corner, pretty solid through Bethesda and around towards Silver Spring and early into College Park. A couple of earlier wrecks, the interloop at the Legion Bridge, the interloop near New Hampshire Avenue, both long gone. And that combined with the volume, though, a very slow ride so far on the interloop. Up on 270, no early incidents heading north through uh, Gaithersburg, trying to head up into Germantown and Clarksburg and up into Frederick County. Check out the ride here at Montgomery Village Avenue, just starting to slow through this interchange. More delays from 121 to uh, the lane drop. Elsewhere in Virginia, no major incidents to report. 395 has southbound delays from Seminary Road down to Duke Street. Northbound 395 incident free up across the 14th Street Bridge. 95 south slow in Newington, Woodbridge, and Dale City to Dumfries. Bruce, back to you. Okay, Eric, we thank you very much. In the news at this hour, House Democrats say the health care overhaul plan they unveiled today would result in 96% of Americans having health coverage of some kind. The measure includes the creation of a government government-regulated insurance exchange where private companies would sell policies to individuals. It would also require large companies to offer coverage and it would require insurance individuals to get insurance. Republicans swiftly denounced the plan, calling it a government takeover of health care. The bodies of 18 Americans killed in action in Afghanistan this week have returned to the U.S. 15 of the dead served in the military, three were DEA agents. President Obama was on hand to honor the fallen. He made an unscheduled visit to Dover Air Force Base overnight to be there when the military transport carrying the bodies arrived. Earlier this year, Mr. Obama ended a nearly 20-year ban on photos of flag-draped coffins returning to America. More than 300,000 Virginia voters will soon be getting a letter from the president urging them to vote for gubernatorial hopeful Cree Deeds. The letter is part of a continuing push from the White House to help Deeds, who trails badly in most polls. In the letter, the president says he needs, quote, good governors to help lay the foundations of change. The D.C. Council continues to probe those controversial layoffs ordered by school's chancellor, Michelle Rhee. Rhee has just taken the hot seat at the Wilson Building, and we will have more for you on her testimony later on live tonight. In the past, Rhee has defended the decision, saying they were based solely on closing a $44 million budget shortfall. Several of those who attended the hearing were employees who were let go. They want the city council to step in and reinstate their jobs. Kyle Osborne joins us now with an update on the end of the week forecast as Friday 5 o'clock <laughs> draws ever closer. Hi, Kyle. Not soon enough, right, Bruce? Yep. Uh, it's a cloudy day out there, but I have to tell you, it's dry, and the roads are dry, and everything else is dry. So, you know, people out there on the corner lining up to uh, to, to buy a, a gyro from the guy in the corner, I think it could be worse, you know, even though it looks rather gray out there. Uh, at least you can walk outside and have lunch there. Here's what we've got now. We're going to go with a forecast. We're, uh, we've got right now temperatures in the upper 50s, so that's where we'll keep it for now. We'll call it cloudy. A little cool, a little breezy, but not too chilly when you consider that the temperatures aren't going to fall that much overnight. We'll stay in the low 50s for the overnight lows. And then tomorrow, pretty much a carbon copy of today. There's a chance that we might see some patches of very early morning drizzle, but other than that, it'll be uh, dry and gray and hopefully a little bit milder, but right around 62. The weekend is going to offer us, uh, well, some challenges, but also some payoffs. We'll talk about that coming up in the next segment with that seven day, Bruce. All right, Kyle, we thank you very much. Continuing our conversation now with Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. Phone lines open. I say open. I think we might have an open line or two. I know a number of you have been waiting patiently. The number here on News Talk, area code 703-387-1020. Let's go to the phones right now. I know there's someone who's been waiting patiently to talk about health care, which was our topic A today. Help me out, gang. Who is it? Line one, Fred in Annandale. Fred, I know you've been waiting. Hello, Fred, you're on the air. Yes, I want to know what gives the federal government the right to pick my pocket to go pay for somebody else's health care insurance. Taxes are going to rise over this, and sooner or later, they've got to quit picking people's pockets because the public's running out of money. Fred, stay on the line because uh, I, I suspect you and Congresswoman Norton have a difference of opinion on this, and, I, and this is an important uh, issue that you've raised that I want to talk about. It, it is an important issue, Fred. And you know, the president said that, that he wasn't going to raise taxes. 
And uh, let me tell you what, what we've done. Um, it is true we had to raise revenue, because you, as you point out, uh, you know, we got a deficit, we got problems. Unless you make half a million dollars, you don't have anything to worry about in this bill. The only people that got any benefit from the Bush tax cuts were very rich people in the United States, and there may be some additional revenue from them. Since they already got the benefit of 12 years of tax cuts, you and I didn't get, I will cry for them maybe tomorrow, but not the day before we're going to get a health care bill. Fred, do you worry, as some do, that the health, do you, and it's none of our business, but I'm just curious, do you have coverage now through an employer, say? Yes, I do. And do you think that the addition of this new player, this new entity, the so-called public option or exchange, would alter uh, anything that you have right now or anything that you and others like you enjoy right now? No, but my federal taxes will rise because the doctors are not going to give away care for free. Well, that... And Medicare is not paying them enough. That's why most doctors are not even taking Medicare anymore. And we're not taking out Medicare either. But what about the reimbursement rates? Uh, the reimbursement rates will probably be negotiated in, in our bill. Uh, uh, initially, we had Medicare plus five, as we called it. But that's out of this bill now because there were some people who were concerned about their providers and about, and about hospitals. Look, we've had to listen to everybody in order to get this bill done. And we found a way to do it. The very richest people uh, may not, in fact, come off as well. But I, I'm, I'm sorry, that's less than one half of one percent of the American people. And this bill keeps them from having their taxes raised. Fred, thank you very much. Good call to line two. Uh, line two. Hello, John. John in Northeast. You're on with Congresswoman uh, Norton. Congresswoman, I have a concern. Uh, it's a little bit past the uh, life, uh, it's about life insurance with Veterans Administration. Did you know that if a veteran is, uh, passes away and they leave a beneficiary form, that the Veterans Administration does not have to honor who the veterans wants that money to go to? I've been fighting this problem for over uh, six years, and I've been working with your office, but we'll discuss that in private. And I just think that somebody needs to come forward and make VA change their rules. Explain and it again. If you've designated I, I, who you want to receive the benefits, give it to them. Do you under, uh, uh, if you're saying that a veteran has died, has named a beneficiary, but for some reason that beneficiary can't get his uh, insurance, his insurance, is that what you're saying? I'm saying I was the beneficiary of uh, my parent, and a, another sibling contested it, and this has been going on for over six years. Well, you see, there's a problem there. And you say my office has been helping. I wish you would call and ask for uh, my chief of staff, uh, Sheila Bunn, so that I can review it myself. If you have a contest within the family, then, of course, the government is going to hold up until they see who is the rightful Anybody recipient. The baby's mama, anything. Anyone that comes forward and contests the, uh, That's true. Form. That's true. Sometimes that can happen. But let us look into it. Maybe we can get you a faster answer. John, thank you very, very much. And uh, you have the name of uh, the congresswoman. A and it's 225-8050. There you go. 225-8050, area code 202. John, thank you very much. Um, so it looks as though the District of Columbia Council is going to approve and the mayor is going to sign a bill legalizing gay marriage in the city. And we know two things will come from that, assuming that it does happen, number one, uh, it goes to Congress, 30-day review period, same as any other piece of legislation. It'll be fascinating to see w how much opposition there is, who to, who's involved, how robust, uh, the strategy, is it small, is it big? That's going to be fascinating political theater. How much and how you push back will be interesting. So uh, let, well, let me just, and, and, and then of course, uh, there are going to be core challenges as well, and that will you know, take time and be fascinating as well. But talk about the first part. Well, let me predict. Uh, let me just say this. On the, on the list of things I'm most worried about, I would place health care and D.C. voting rights way above mm -hmm. having to defeat a negative, because that's what I'm, I'm having to do here. They're going to have to come forward and get a bill uh, through or get it attached to something. Well, who's in charge? Democrats are in charge. I know I can keep that from happening in the House, and the Senate isn't looking for any more trouble than it already has. Uh, even Republicans, who were the first to step up to try to deny us the right to say, to do with our own constituents what should be done, 
even they have said, look, I don't see that we have the ability to do it. And that's why we want to keep them in the minority. Uh, I think this is going to be, excuse me, boring. <laughs> I like to keep it boring when it comes to bills passed by the council. So the only people who should be interested in it uh, are, are indeed dealing with it, and that is the council. And when they've already got their supermajority, I'm not much worried about this bill in the Congress. Talk about the metro safety legislation that you and colleagues from around the region have introduced. Now, that demands attention. And the fact is that in putting on this bill, I got original co-sponsors from the region because we lost nine folks, including seven, of course, in the District of Columbia, but the whole region rides the metro. And we discovered at the hearings uh, that uh, the uh, amalgamated trans transport union had suggested something that, in fact, had been put in place, that this, we know where, we know who died. They died in 40-year-old cars. Mm -hmm. We know who lived. Uh, they were in cars that were newer cars. So the question is, why were the old cars up front like that, or for that matter, in the caboose? Because nobody had suggested it. Who was in a position to suggest it? The NTSB had never done so. They haven't complained about it. Uh, in fact, nobody knows for sure what is crassworthy, because until an, a, a bill was put in again by the region saying, let's have national standards, only the states may now determine that. And so your bill? We, uh, we now have a bill, a regional bill, that says let's have nasty, uh, sorry, <laughs> national safety standards for transit systems. We've been blocked from doing that. We're trying to mm. unblock that. So nobody does crashworthy stuff, but I can tell you this much. If you have new cars, uh, over 40 year old cars, you would not go put the most vulnerable cars up front. When the union suggested that, everybody said, okay, since you can't take them out because there are too many people who ride and <laughs> we'd be lost, then at least put your best car in the front and your best car in the back. Maybe we could have saved some lives and we may have had a real test here, so let's do it. And it said to the NTSB, has been excellent in giving recommendations, mm -hmm. but, but for a dozen years they kept saying the same thing. Buy new cars, retro sec, ret retrofit old cars, except uh, uh, Bruce, they didn't have a dime to do that right. until we finally, this year, got out the first $150 million of the $1.5 billion that we authorized only when the Democrats took control in 2007. Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton joining us today to discuss a wide range of events. It's always good having you here. Great segment. Thanks very much for your time. Today. Thank you, Bruce. Good to have you with us as always. Up next, as we continue for you, we will spotlight the hottest legislative races in Virginia. Don't go away. Let's talk live weekdays at noon on News Channel 8. If you're shopping RAV4, Pilot, or Escape, stop wasting time. Fair